So this is my workshop sound system. We have an old speaker bar that came from a Dell monitor. I think it's a Dell monitor. It came from some monitor. I ripped it off the monitor, screwed it into my uh, shelf above my workbench, and then hooked it up to a music source. Uh, but the volume control was always difficult to get to because my workbench is kind of big. That's kind of far back there. I love having that in that location, but it's really a pain to turn it on and off. So I hooked it up. I hooked the power supply, which you can see on the left. Uh, rather than the power supply going right into the speaker, the power supply goes into this box, and then from there it goes into the speaker. And this box is a radar module. And when I wave my hand close enough to the device, it should turn on. So let's give it a shot. There you go. And it takes a second to warm up. And uh, it has a latched kind of detection system, so I'll do it again. And it turns off. Um, so yeah, let me, let me try it once more just to be cool. You have to get pretty close for it to work. And it takes a second. That slow volume increase is part of the speaker itself. So I'll turn it off. And uh, yeah, so this is pretty cool. This is not using infrared. It's not using sonar or ultrasound or uh, um, it's using or like ultrasonic transducer or something. This is actually using true radar. So <laughs> it's, uh, I know I was only going to do that once, but it's so fun to do. I can't stop doing it. So let's take a look inside and let's see how it works. So I'll turn this off. And just to be safe, I'll go ahead and unplug both of these here. And let's move this around a little bit. All right, so this is the box. It's pretty cool. It's a little bit different than a lot of the boxes I've been making lately because most of the boxes I make have a whole bunch of like user interface knobs and buttons and stuff. And this box is so clean. It just has a single LED on the front and two power jacks. And I kind of uh, drew in an arrow, which means uh, positive voltage goes in here, or at least the input uh, power supply goes in here. And then the radar, which is sensed on the front, is switched and it controls the DC jack here. So let's pop it open and take a look inside. I did a full description of this on the website, but here's a quick rundown. Uh, yeah, this is so simple. I did just point to point soldering and I hot glued this radar sensor onto the enclosure. And um, yeah, so I'd encourage you to look at the website for kind of higher quality pictures. But we have a radar module here, which really just has three connections. There's a ground, out, and VCC. So you apply five volts to VCC, um, ground to ground, obviously. And then the out is gives you an output pulse, depending on whether or not you cross the threshold of distance. And the distance cap sensing capability of this device is actually pretty good. It can sense things tens of feet away. Um, and it claims, I think, over 100 feet away, but it's, it's made to sense things far away. But I found that if I add enough hot glue down in there and put it inside of an enclosure like this, I can reduce its distance. So just sitting down in my chair won't turn it on. I actually have to get a hand kind of close to it. And that was a little bit of trial and error. And um, I also found that this works pretty well. I have this aluminum tape. And my backup plan, if this weren't enough attenuation, would be to line it a little bit with this. And I did some tests earlier where I uh, put this adhesive tape on the front, and it dramatically decreased the, the distance. Um, but it would be a little bit more of an eyesore. And I feel really lucky that this worked as well as it did just with this generic plastic case. Um, so the LED... I use I drilled a hole and I used an LED bezel, which makes it look nice, but it was a little bit wobbly, so I put some hot glue, hot glue there. Uh, it's I guess I should talk about this microchip here. I glued a microchip to the back of the module so that when you get your hand close, normally it just does a single pulse that goes high and then low again. But I didn't want it to do that to control the audio because then it would only play audio when my hand is close. So I use the pulse to go through a counter IC, which is really just acting as a flip-flop, uh, or kind of like a triggered latch type of thing. So one pulse will raise it high, and then it stays high, and then a second pulse will raise it low again. And when the output of this is high, it tells a uh, MOSFET, an in-channel MOSFET down here, I think that's what this one is, it tells the in-channel MOSFET to allow current to flow from the input jack to the output jack. So again, just to run through, this is the input jack. 
It's somewhere between, I don't know, 13, 17 volts, something like that. Whatever the speaker system can tolerate, which it's, it has a little bit of flexibility there. So let's just say 15 volts comes in, and it goes through this IRF 510, and the voltage on the uh, gate pin determines whether or not that current flows to this jack. And that voltage is the output of a flip-flop or divide-by-two counter. And yeah, the rest is pretty straightforward. I also have an LM7805 linear voltage regulator here on the 15-volt rail, and it's outputting 5 volts. And it's really important, you only want to feed this radar sensor with 5 volts. <laughs> Do not feed it with a higher voltage. Um, but yeah, so that's, that's truly everything. So put that back together, and you've got a radar controlled power switch. Uh, all the details are on the website, swharden.com. Check it out.